Uh, my name is Deputy Andrew Yoakum. I'm a patrol deputy for the Lewis County Sheriff's Office. And today we're gonna to talk about interactions with emergency services. So I know a lot of people are fearful of being pulled over by the police. Um, and it's probably just because maybe it's never happened or they've heard horror stories or whatever it may be. But the biggest thing is it's really just two, an interaction between two individuals. Um, it's something that somebody should not fear just because you're getting pulled over doesn't necessarily mean um, you're getting a ticket or that you're a bad person. Um, there is a community caretaking aspect of law enforcement and that includes pulling over a vehicle. Uh, I stopped several vehicles for uh, defective equipment. Um, there's a lot of people that, I mean, who gets out and checks all their brake lights? I don't. And so sometimes that's somebody else telling you, like, hey, you have a brake light out. That somebody can also be a law enforcement officer. I've, I've stopped several people for brake lights. I have really no intentions of writing them a ticket for that, but it's my part of community caretaking to inform them of it. Therefore, I could keep the community safe because that one brake light might, be, might make, make the difference of you getting rear-ended or another vehicle seeing you from a distance. When it comes to getting pulled over, us as cops, we're trained, we're looking for where we're gonna pretty much put you in the vehicle. Um, Ideally, we're looking for a safe environment to stop you, uh, to stop the vehicle. And so for some instance, there might be a violation, an officer pulls behind you and he's gonna initiate a traffic stop, but then for, some, for, for a safety concern, or depending on traffic, he's gonna follow you for a distance looking for a safe place to pull over. And it's vice versa. If you do not feel safe where you're at to pull over, as long as you're indicating via turn signals or hazard lights and decreasing your speed, you could pull to a safe speed or to a safe place. A safe place is going to be safely off the roadway. Um, if you're going down a busy road and there's multiple businesses, pull into a parking lot. That's always the best. You know, you're taking yourself and the officer off of the roadway. Um, sometimes there's just a shoulder. Um, sometimes it's the side of the highway, uh, side of the freeway. Uh, whatever it may be, it just needs to be off of the roadway. So once you get pulled over, and the, before the cop is making contact. It's always nice to just be prepared to, to be contacted. Um, the one thing that cops that we really don't like, um, not that we don't like, but that's gonna heighten our awareness is when we see a driver reaching in multiple different places in a vehicle. Um, ideally, when we pull over a vehicle and we see them reaching towards their glove compartment, that is a common behavior. But now when they're reaching in their center console, they're reaching in their back seat, they're reaching uh, by their driver's door panel, multiple areas, now we're, our awareness is starting to heighten. Because um, we don't know, it's, it's not common for somebody to do that. And so whenever somebody steps outside what's common, that's when our awareness gets heightened. So the biggest thing about windows is it's a state law. Um, when it comes to window glaze, there's a certain percentage, depending unless you have a, a medical exception or whatever, uh, that may be, um, there is a certain window glaze that you're allowed to have. And it's very common, especially nowadays, that there's a lot of illegal window tent out there. And so when I'm walking up to a vehicle and I can't see in that vehicle, I don't know how many occupants are in that vehicle, it's just another thing that's, that's, that's raising my awareness. Um, you know, that's why, you know, there's a lot of people that they get pulled over by law enforcement at night. Uh, they don't like the spotlight and, the, and their mirrors, it's blinding them. Um, and I understand that it's an inconvenience, but there's a purpose behind that. It's a purpose to where hopefully, you know, you necessarily can't see us. Not that you have ill intentions against us, but in the one case that that person does have ill intentions, it's going to help protect us. No, no person has to roll down their windows, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to put you in the right step of having a good contact with an officer. Because me, I'm going to see that and I'm going to greatly appreciate it. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to tell you, hey, I really appreciate you rolling down your windows. You can roll them up if you'd like. Therefore, you know, you don't have to be in the, in the rain or in the cold or whatever it may be at the elements. But it's, it's definitely going to, it's going to let me know as the officer that you do not have ill intentions towards me and you're trying to let me know. So the first thing that I do when I contact anybody in a traffic stop is I introduce myself and I give an explanation of the reason for the stop. Um, and then after that, you're going to be required to provide three documents, and this is with every traffic stop. It's going to be your driver's license, the vehicle registration, 
and valid proof of vehicle insurance. So I'm gonna take these documents, I'm gonna go back to my car and I'm gonna check the registration, I'm gonna check your driver's license and I'm gonna ensure that the insurance you provided is current. Uh, most of the time with your vehicle insurance, I'll do this at the, at the vehicle with you and I'll hand it back. Uh, the biggest thing we run into is people not having current proofs of insurance or their current vehicle registration. There's been multiple times where people, they get a new registration every year and they keep each one and then they're digging through trying to find the right one. I always tell people, it's like once you get that new one, shred your old one. Um, insurance, usually they're only good for every six months. Um, so making sure you have current, it has to be current vehicle registration. And if you have it on a mobile app, I always suggest people, hey, on your mobile app, take a screenshot of it and keep that in your, in your phone. Because there's going to be a time, especially with us out in the county, we're going to stop you in an area where you have no cell phone service, but it's still going to be a requirement to be you to provide that proof of insurance. After I take your documentation, um, there's obviously some, depending on what the reason for the stop was, whether there's uh, a traffic infraction or an actual crime, uh, whatever it may be, I'm going to come up, I'm going to provide you your documents back, uh, whether you get a verbal warning, um, uh, a written warning or correction notice or an infraction or a criminal citation. Whatever it's going to be, I'm going to explain the next process, the next steps. Um, whether it's a warning and just hopefully, you know, you learn from this and, you know, you make better cha choices. Uh, maybe you fixed whatever the defect was. Um, and then if it's an infraction, I'm going to inform you how to properly respond to both infractions and citations. The biggest thing is whenever you're interacting with anybody, whether it's a cop or anybody, try to always be respectful. Um, if a police officer asks you to step out of the car, step out of the car. Um, if you want to dispute something, whether it's a reason for the stop or, uh, or whatever it may be, there's a time and place to do that. But in your vehicle on the side of the road is not that place. Um, if you do not agree with the ticket and you want to argue, uh, with the officer, save that for court. Um, when you're giving lawful commands to exit your vehicle, that is not your time to dispute that. You could dispute that afterwards, but your refusal is going to elevate and escalate the situation, okay? Um, there's a time and place for everything, and on the side of the street is not the time for that. Usually when people get pulled, pulled over, they know they're getting pulled over. Uh, they see the cop coming behind them, uh, and there's that oh no moment, and you know you're going to get pulled over. Uh, some people panic. Do not panic. Uh, us as law enforcement, we have the mindset that once we turn our lights on, you're going to do the one thing we don't want you to do. And that's just, that's just our mindset, because now we have a vehicle in motion, whether, regardless of what your speed is, whether it's uh, in a posted 70 or a 25. Uh, once we turn on our emergency lights behind you, don't slam on your brake. Just take a deep breath and slowly start making your way to the shoulder. Um, if you're on the freeway, ideally you're always supposed to pull to the right. If you're on a two-way road in a, in a, or a one-way road in a city and there's a shoulder on both sides, that's fine. On the freeway, the interstate, no. You need to make your way slowly to the right-hand shoulder. Uh, we'll come up, we'll contact you, we'll go through that interaction. Whatever the outcome's gonna be, once we're done, we're gonna go back to our vehicle, and most of the time we're gonna wait for you to depart. Because we're the ones that took you off of the roadway, and so it's our responsibility to make sure you get back on the roadway safely. Um, especially on a highway where there's traffic moving at a high speed, maybe there's not a good uh, area for you to, to get your speed back up to the flow of traffic. We're going to stay there with our lights on, indicating to people that hopefully they'll move over and this will allow you to safely get back on the roadway. Um, so if, you, if you're done with your interaction with law enforcement and you see us just sitting in our car behind you waiting, uh, we're waiting because we want you to be safely on your road, uh, get safely back on the roadway. Big thing is, you know, when you're not that person being pulled over and Maybe you're just driving by a traffic stop. There are still laws that apply to you. Uh, for instance, if we're on the side of the freeway and 
uh, and you're in the far left or far right lane and you're coming up to a traffic stop who is on the right hand shoulder, it's actually your responsibility as the driver to either decrease your speed by, I believe it's 10 miles an hour or to move over. Um, so a big thing is even though you're not the person, the vehicle being pulled over, um, it, it's still something you have to watch out for. Um, it, your responsibility as a driver is to you know, yield to those emergency lights as well. Because there, there might be a, an instance where a traffic stop is in the lane of travel and you now you have to yield to that properly, whether that's you stopping completely or going around. Um, usually if there's multiple vehicles out there, you know, I'd look for an officer that's flagging traffic as well too. Don't overthink being pulled over. It is simply going to be an interaction between two people. One might be a cop and one is a driver, but it's still just an interaction between two people. Um, some people have bad days. Some people have stuff going on in life. That's why it's so important that we always just try to be courteous and respectful towards each other. Um, there's a lot of times that people get pulled over and they're not happy. I try to shoot nothing but joy and respect towards them. And my goal with every interaction, whether I write somebody a ticket or not, is I get a thank you at the end of the contact. And for, I'd say probably about 95% of my contacts, it happens. Some people, you know, have told me that they really appreciate my courtesy because at the end of the day, it's just two people having a contact. That's all it is.